Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because we are trying to give me a little upgrade from a folding ace plastic dining room kitchen table. We're going to upgrade it into a 35 ton forged steel kitchen table. Okay, maybe not 35 tons, but this thing is going to be heavy. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoy. In part one, Will and I forged out these legs. You see we followed in some transitions here, the transition between the 1x3 or 25x75mm flat stock down into these tapered legs and these are going to be the bending points for the legs themselves. Now what I want to do now is I want to punch a bunch of holes and get some rivets made so that we can attach this chunky piece of flat stock to the underneath of these legs so we can keep them all together as one unit and give them a little extra rigidity. At the end of the last video, we made up a little punch. I think I might have to grind a little bit off of there. We also made up a drift. We need to start laying out and punching some holes. we've done. We have punched four holes. We then drifted those holes and then swelled them out a little larger than the final half inch so that hopefully we can get a rivet in there just fine. We've put it all on the ground and we're going to use this. This is a half inch transfer punch. We're going to use this to mark out exactly where on our legs we need to punch some holes. We're then going to lay out two extra holes on the legs for bolting to the tabletop. <laughs> So while this piece is heating up, I just want to bring your attention to something rather interesting. Welcome to Montana, where for some reason on the 30th of April, it's snowing outside. What I'm doing right now is we're taking this. Now this is just a ball punch, a big ball punch. I just want something that's bigger than that hole. And we're sinking this in from the top so we can effectively create a countersink so that when we rivet our long bar onto those legs, those rivets are able to stay flush. So right now, Will is forging up a drift. The reason for it, now we did these little countersink areas here. Great, no, terrible, that was stupid. Completely stupid design on my part, thinking to do that, because what that did is that pushed the holes further away, so now we have an alignment issue, and we've got to fix that. That's why Will's making up a 5 8 inch drift, and we're gonna enlarge these holes to hopefully mean that we have the clearance to get rivets to fit in. Now, that is a fudge which I'm very, very, very embarrassed to say. It's a fudge, it's not the right way to do it. The right way to do it would have been to think about it right and do it right, but this is hopefully gonna mean that the aesthetics of the piece aren't damaged, and hopefully, it's still nice and strong too. So we're then gonna have to put these back in the fire and enlarge these holes. Alrighty, we've got our holes opened up. 
We have also made a uh, spacer piece. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. We made a little spacer piece so we can rivet it. But we've splayed out the table like this. I think it's gonna work just about okay. We've got just enough clearance to make it work. Ogly doggly, we have done a little bit of straightening on the piece, and we now have it set up here on the welding table, ready for us to bend it. We made these fuller marks right there so that we could bend it nice and easily. So we're gonna get a little bit of heat on this. We have this indexed up. We're gonna pull the plate out, drop it down, bend this just out to right here. We're gonna do the opposite side. We're then gonna have to invert all of this, but that's gonna be how we get our legs bent. Okie dokie, we've got this puppy all bent up. We got the legs in place. Don't tell PETA about the bent puppies. Because then they're gonna get all bent out of shape too. Actually no, they're bent into shape. We so, shimmed them into shape. Ooh, that sounds painful. That's actually what we did. We uh, used shims and blocks to bring this top to level, which means that now we can take our height gauge on a very accurate piece of medium density fiber board to save it scratching on the concrete. We are gonna bring this into position and scribe across the legs to find a place to cut it with an angle grinder. I am so excited with how this table looks. This thing is awesome. I love it. I'm a big fan of how wood and steel goes together. I love that we got the opportunity to put some rivets in this bad boy. It is bolted onto the butcher block countertop. The top is lag bolted in place, which means if I ever want to put a new top on it, you know, maybe I find something that's a little nicer than a piece of butcher block that I picked up from Lowe's, I can always do it, but I have I'm just thrilled for now. Couldn't be happier. I think this is gonna go great in the kitchen and, uh, and serve as a good improvement upon the $60 Ace fold-up table. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Will, for your help on this project. Thank you guys again for watching along. Please be sure to go to alexsteelshop.com and grab yourself some of our merchandise. Just like this Damascus Touch Mark sweater, this one is in uh, maroon, and I'm uh, becoming quite fond of it. So I would be thrilled if you go to alexsteelshop.com, go buy some stuff there that helps support the show. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.